Done. Let's jump. Oh, oh, go home. Welcome back to AM Joy. Why, you might ask, is Sebastian Gorka back anywhere near the White House? former White House aide who styles himself Dr. Gorka and who is best known for sporting the pin of a Nazi-linked Hungarian organization to an inaugural ball and for very over-the-top pronouncements about the Middle East about which he has no obvious expertise. Well, he joined other right-wing extremists, conspiracy theorists, and various cosplayers at the White House this week for a so-called social media summit to decry what they claim is a bias against conservative media on the Twitters and such. The confab is a signal that Trump thinks he can win in 2020 by doubling down on what worked in 2016, including a tighter embrace of the alt-right. The other thing Trump is doubling down on are policies that target non-white migrants with maximum cruelty. Mass ICE raids are scheduled to happen today, targeting undocumented families in cities around the U.S. The raids were announced in advance, which you normally wouldn't do in law enforcement, so it seems pretty clear that the announcement was for Trump's political base. This, as we're still watching, most of us in horror, as migrant families are still being separated at the border, as horrific conditions are being exposed at migrant detention centers, where migrants are reporting not being able to shower for weeks, not getting enough to eat, not having anywhere to sleep due to dangerous overcrowding, children being forced to take care of babies that they've just met, and women being told by guards to drink from the toilet. The guards did finally, uh, the courts did finally succeed in stopping the Trump administration from manipulating the census by adding a citizenship question, though the Trump administration is still threatening to get the information by some other means. And just this morning, Donald Trump took things to a brand new low in tweets targeting progressive congresswomen of color, saying they should go back to where they came from, as if these women are not Americans. All of it clearly designed to stoke and hatred and to rile up Trump's base for 2020. Joining me now, Gabriel Sherman, Vanity Fair special correspondent, Tara Dowdell, business and political marketing consultant, Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com, and Malcolm Nance, author of The Plot to Destroy Democracy. Thank you all for being here. Um, so let's start with the social media piece of this, Gabe. Um, part of Donald Trump's, you know, strategy has been to use Twitter to communicate yeah. directly to his base. Of it's also apparently like an obsession and a tick. It might just actually be just he's just obsessed with Twitter and just has fun doing it. This morning he decided to use his Twitter to personally attack co me members yeah. of, of Congress. Uh, he says, so interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswoman who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt and inept anywhere in the world, if they have even a functioning government at all, now loudly and viciously telling people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, our government should be run, blah, 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 why don't they go back to their country they came from? Yeah. That's, mm. that, that is a, a very Trumpian way of doing it. It, it exposes who he is, mm -hmm. right? These women, I think three of them were born in the United States. Like, one yeah. of them, I think, was born in Chicago. Like, uh, you know what I mean? But just the fact that they're brown means they must be born. Yeah, I mean, that is a, a case of synergy between old media and new media because that was a talking point last week on Tucker Carlson's show about, you know, people who come, uh, immigrants and uh, immigrants who run for public office who come to America should be, quote, grateful to this country in a certain in a sense, you know, pledge your fealty to America rather than honoring our tradition, which is free speech and everyone being able to express their views. One other point about the social media summit I find just, you know, beyond ironic given that this is a Republican White House, is that they're talking about private companies mm -hmm. deciding what they do. If, you know, Republicans believe in a free and open economy, start your own social network. Right. I mean, the idea that the government is going to censor a private company over speech that Donald Trump disagrees with is, you know, uh, once again, the, he has these authoritarian tendencies, as we've talked about. Right. They, they don't want to have a fairness doctrine that used to mandate that public television had to have equal representation of left and right, but they want the government to force Twitter to give equal mention to their little tweets. They want to make us have to look at their little tweets because they're tweeting, we're not looking, and they're mad because we're not watching their tweets. Like, that actually is incoherent, but they seem to want big government to force everybody to look at them. It's also about playing the victim, which is a big part of Trump's appeal. He's a victim, yep. his base are victims of these terrible people of color who are making their lives harder. So this is part of it. And it's also part of Trump's efforts to distract. He, there are a lot of terrible things that you enumerated going on right now, which you laid out fully at the top of this segment about what's happening at the border. So be very clear, that's also about distracting. Anytime Trump does these impromptu sessions 
with uh, his uh, lunatic friends like uh, Sebastian Gorka. Dr. It, it, uh, it is by design. <laughs> and Sebastian Gorka is is uh, is is an interesting character because it also shows us how the folks that are just like Trump are just so drawn to him. Sebastian Gorka is is yet another person that wants to be on television. Yeah, that's absolutely. a big part of what he's doing too. And he comes from television, which is right. why Trump likes him. Anyone who exactly. Comes from so you know, there's the, there is this synergy, and we're going to talk more with Gabe in the next block. But this block, uh, the synergy between the social media strategy and what then Fox reflects back to him is sort of direct. So Donald Trump this morning attacking these women, one of whom actually you know was a refugee, Ilan Omar, right? But she's become one of the other fixations. These these four congresswomen. Are the fixations of the right. Uh, here's Tucker Carlson going after Ilhan Omar on Tuesday. Ilhan Omar is living proof that the way we practice immigration has become dangerous to this country. So be grateful for Ilhan Omar, annoying as she is. She's a living fire alarm, a warning to the rest of us that we better change our immigration system immediately or yeah. else. So, so Jason, it, it, they're being very direct now. It used to be subtext, yeah, yeah. and they had to sort of get around sort of saying the, the thing. But now they're just saying the thing. You know, we have to keep that lady, people that look like that, out of America. Yeah, Tucker Carlson used to do this sort of direct, you know, direct to DVD kind of white nationalism. <laughs> now he's just really obvious about it. It's like, I, I don't like brown people, and, and they make me nervous, and they make me afraid. Um, as if somehow someone who comes to this country and then runs for public office and is elected by a community is somehow a warning sign, any more so than the person who's currently in the White House. Joy, this is the thing that I think is, is really key for all of us to understand. This is the only campaign strategy that Donald Trump has. His only strategy is to get a whole bunch of people on social media to say a whole bunch of crazy things in order to distract the left and galvanize the right. Now, the right doesn't need to be galvanized. As long as there's a gay person and a black person and a Hispanic person in this country, they're galvanized because they think they shouldn't be here, right? But the left needs to remember Twitter is only about 20% of the population. Facebook is not information that millennials and Gen Zs tend to get their information from. They need to recognize that at the end of the day, the successful way to combat this presidency is to not try to beat him in the areas where he actually does have a skill set, because he certainly doesn't know about government. The way you beat him is with real policy, knocking on doors, and making differences in people's lives. Because he's laying out what his campaign strategy is. The Democrats need to make sure they have a good counter. Right, and you know, it's interesting um, that, that you know it starts off, um, Malcolm, as just being immigrants. Um, who are the are the enemy? But it, it quickly migrates. It, it's not. It doesn't take long, right? You're now talking about American members of Congress. And if my producers could just look up for me where these uh, four, when we know where Ilhan Omar was born, we, let's look up where they were born. Just whenever you get it, just let me know where these women were born. Just to FYI that. But now let's 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 move on to the American people of color. Here is David Horowitz, of course, because of course he's on Fox talking uh, on Tucker Carlson's show, of course. And here he is uh, talking about. Um, some other people of color. Take a listen. The creation of America was probably the greatest gift given to black people in 3,000 years because slavery w was considered a normal institution for all those years. Unfortunately, the people who hate America on the left, uh, and, and this embraces so much of the Democratic Party these days, have conducted a 50-year, 60-year attack on Christianity in this country, and they've driven prayer and religion out of the schools. You can't teach a public school child that the pilgrims were Christians fleeing uh, persecution. <laughs> You're welcome, black America. You're welcome for slavery. <laughs> Feel free to send a thank you note right to 1600 Pennsylvania wow. Avenue. Malcolm Nance, your thoughts? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm almost stunned, but <laughs> let, me, let me. I can't even. Okay. Last week, I just came back from a conference that was held in Oswiecim, Poland, in the Auschwitz Memorial Foundation. And the name of the conference was Never Again, Really? And it had people come from all over the world to discuss the growing signs that we are seeing around Europe and the United States and other parts of the world of this growing authoritarianism that has, this, has that rhythm of the same thing that we saw in the 1930s. And for the Auschwitz Memorial Foundation to bring this global conference together to discuss this, to ask, are we seeing what we in the intelligence community call eliminationist rhetoric? Uh, and you know, I had to go there and I had to admit, we are seeing signs that we should never, ever have seen again. 
Uh, I know that recently in Congress, uh, somebody, a, a group occupied uh, one of the House or, or Senate office buildings and were chanting, never again is now. You know, it sounds like fun. We could all talk about Seb Gorka and the rest of these people out there and the, the outrageous things that they do and the outrageous fact that they were brought to the White House. But when I go into the South and when I go into the Midwest, I see TV commercials which portray the left, the, the attacking liberal left, as these Antifa mobs who are burning things, and they are portraying normal, regular America as a dangerous subcomponent that they need to be defensive against. Yeah. And it's, it's all fun and games until this turns into armed violence. Right. This extremism that entered into the White House with these Facebook people and, and, you know, the mime makers and everything, that in their world, which is a bubble, is a dangerous intelligence right. indicator about where we're going to go in this next year. It's not about 2020. Mm -hmm. It's about bringing revenge down upon anything they're, they're, they're dis, right. uh, disapprove of. Right, and, and I mean, it's, and it's pretty obvious now, right? And, and you have... They have an ecosystem now that it isn't just the far, far, far right on Twitter. Mm, yeah. You know, they've got now this larger ecosystem that is both social media mm -hmm. and Fox News yeah. and Sinclair broadcasts that are all right. broadcasting the same message. Yeah. Brown and black people and liberal white people are dangerous. Mm -hmm. They are they are a right. danger to America. They have to be gotten rid of. They have to be extricated. They have to be removed. Yeah. We have to do it. If they're in cages, don't worry about that. They're fine there. That, that's where they need to be. They need to be locked up. You notice that the vice president was only shown with male yeah. migrants. Yeah. So they, they just want you to see that. It just you know it's it's pretty. They, they do it kind of, you know, it's very seamless. Um, Politico has a piece out Thursday that says in a, sing, in a single day, Trump shows his 2020 card. The president is sending his base a clear message. He's still fighting, even if his policies stumble. There's an older story from January in which a woman who was actually upset, you know, after a, after a hurricane shut down, yeah. she was upset with Trump. And the quote she had for him, she said, I voted for him. And he's the one doing this, she said of Trump, something she didn't like he was doing. I thought he was going to do things. He's not hurting the people he needs to be hurting. Mm -hmm. So right. in January, he wasn't Who? hurting the right people. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do, show them I'm hurting the right people. Well, I mean, clearly, he is running a base election. He is governed as a base president. We've never seen this in my political lifetime, where the president has decided, I'm not president of the United States. I'm president of the Make America Great part of the United States, and that's 20 to 30 percent of the population. And so he is now going to ratchet up the rhetoric and the action. It's not just words, it's actually his policies to get his base to vote. It's the only way he sees a path to re-election. Right, and, and it, it's, it's a, it actually works. I mean, his base is, is a minority. This is minority right. rule. They are not the majority, but mm -hmm. they all vote. They will crawl over broken glass to put him back in office because he's Absolutely. fighting only for them. That's true. And exactly. there's a statistic out about evangelicals, mm -hmm. white evangelicals, making up such a huge, because they vote in such high numbers, despite them being a small percentage of the population, they actually make up a larger, a far larger percentage. Mm -hmm. They yep. over-represent in the voting right. electorate. Yep. And that's important. The other dynamic that's happening here is that, and I agree with everything that Malcolm said in terms of how dangerous this is, because it is, we've seen across the world, when you dehumanize people, and we've seen it in this country, right, yep. through the institution of slavery, through Jim Crow, when you dehumanize people and you do it over and over and over again, you influence people to see them as animals. If you see people as animals, then you're okay with them being in cages. Yep. You're okay with them being treated mm -hmm. the way they're being treated at the this border in this country, which is uh, in any other situation, if we saw that in another country, we'd be pushing for sanctions through the UN for right. that type of treatment, and we have done right. so. Yeah. Right. But 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 the point the point is that with what he's doing, he's also coupling this with massive voter suppression efforts that are right. not getting enough attention across yes. this country. Yeah. Stopping early voting on college campuses, it's happening in all the swing states, and that's another really important piece because if you can't get your people out to vote because they are being prevented from voting that's right I mean and you, if you think about it you know Jason the way you know South Africa people wonder how did you know 10% yes. of the country you know keep you know the other 90% of their control well it's a combination of extreme violence uh, voter suppression where they have no rights to vote taking away any opportunity to participate socially and civically in the country essentially just forcibly make 90% of the country a non-entity and that only right. the 10% have any rights um, this sort of South Africanization of the United States uh, po po you know sort of our politics is happening and it's actually it's worked up to now for Trump.
Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. one thing, Joy, I, I've spent a lot of time, I've, I've actually been to South Africa, I've taught about campaigns down there. The, the process also by which uh, South African was able to have white minority rule was by finding ways to divide and create divisions within the black community in South Africa, by coming up with sort of false and fictitious reasons for Zulu to dislike Hosa and everything else like that. And that is a driving mm -hmm. force. But one thing I think everybody needs to understand, especially if we're talking about this in the campaign context and who needs to be spoken to, et cetera, et cetera. We're talking about some, not all, white evangelical Christians. This is not about worshiping God. This is not about worshiping Jesus, who historically we all know was a black guy. This is about worshiping whiteness. This is about a country that is now being led by a president who supports white nationalist and white supremacist ideology. And there is no government that transcends white supremacy. If democracy works, when there's a white majority, then they'll do it. And when there's no longer a white majority, they don't care about democracy. If capitalism works, when white people benefit, then they care about capitalism. When that no longer works, they want socialism. This is not driven by any sort of structure that we've understood before. And until we recognize what actually drives the people that Donald Trump brings into his administration, we will fail. We have to understand this is no longer about mm -hmm. negotiation. It is about survival. Yeah. That's what everybody needs to get. And there's a, right. And I think, you, Malcolm, you're right. You use that, that sort of the replacement ideology right. that, you know, on the extreme end, they voice it. But, but what Donald Trump is doing is mm -hmm. he's pushing the idea that this replacement idea is real and that you need to right. be afraid of it. Can you just talk about it in a bigger picture, though, Malcolm? You did a little bit earlier because this is happening in Hungary. This is happening mm -hmm. in Poland. This is happening in Italy. By the way, the Russians are very much in support of it, and they've been stoking it all throughout Europe. Germany they tried just it in had France. a political murder of a you know, right-wing extremist murdered a German right. state politician. Absolutely. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is all over the world, right. Malcolm. Yeah, you know, West, and I, I hate to say. have to, I, yeah, well, I'd hate to have to whip out my Nanstradamus credentials, but the, what, that book, The Plot to Destroy Democracy, which I wrote a year ago, is mainly about Putin's purchasing and restructuring all of right-wing Europe into vassal states that support Russia. And we now are seeing the evidence come out. The Salvini government has a, a, an audio recording of them secretly taking Russian money and taking Russian positions. He actually said in the recording that Europe needs to, bring, to align with Russia for their own protection and sovereignty. These people are not playing games. It is an axis of autocracy. And, uh, and a little nod to Jason Johnson, who is our comic book fan, this whole thing about Hydra from Captain America, it's real. These yeah. people are a multi-headed political body throughout Europe that are working with the Trump administration right. extremely closely. Yeah. One last thing that I got to say, Joy. We are about to undergo a structural fracturing in the United States. You and I, we and everyone on MSNBC has this discussion uh, about these things in the context of politics. These people are not looking at this in the context right. of politics. Right. When I was at Auschwitz, I had sat down with a woman from Rwanda, a young man from Bosnia, a young guy from Cambodia, and an Auschwitz survivor, and they all see the exact same structural failures happening in the United States. And they keep asking me, what is our malfunction? Yeah. We need to correct this quickly, and if this election that's coming up in 2020 fails, it may fail for the last time. Yeah, and, I, and by the way, I, th what you said, uh, somebody please type that up into a memo and send it to Congress because the Democrats right. are treating this as politics. Mm -hmm. They can have right. a normal election mm -hmm. to fix this and you'll just have a, a typical political solution and you'll sign bills and fix it. I, I think it's a bigger picture than that and people need to think right. about it. Gabe, Tara, uh, Jason, uh, thank you very much back thank later you. in the show. Uh, thank you, Malcolm Nance. Thank all of you. Mm -hmm. And Gabe is going to be back in a little bit. Uh, Gabe is also going to stay because he wants to tell us a little bit about the loudest voice in the room. That is next.